Hi everyone, how are you? I'm Jessica. Today is the first day of the Stargazer Quilt Along. This is the Stargazer Quilt. Um, I have been getting a lot of messages on Instagram asking like, how can this pattern be adapted to fat quarters? Or is this a fat quarter pattern? Or, and, and I had asked a question there saying like, once you have a pattern that's written, do you know how to adapt it to use whatever fabric you want or to see if whatever fabric you want can be used? I feel like this is a skill that anyone can learn, but maybe it's not talked about enough that people know that this is within their reach. It's just a little bit of math um, and you can do it no problem. So let's start talking about how we can adapt a pattern to use the fabric that we have or the fabric that we want to use. I can't speak for anyone else's patterns, but I know I can speak for mine because I've written them. So the first step is to look at the quilt. Here I have my pattern open and I'm looking at this quilt. So I'm noticing, and you can look at your fabric requirements too. There's a dark blue, a medium blue, there's pink and red, and then there's white. And those are all the colors that I have used in writing this pattern. But I can make a quilt with endless varieties just from this pattern. Here I have the fabric requirements. Now this is for the large size, the 89 and a half inches. The fabric requirements are listed here. So again, just like we saw, there's red, two thirds of a yard of red, one and one eighth yards of pink, four and seven eighth yards of white, one yard of medium blue, three and three quarter yards of dark blue, and then um, the binding, which is three quarters of a yard. Now, what you can do, say you want, you go back to your pattern and you're like, well, I like how these stars are, but I want them different. I want my centers to be different than my flying geese. You can do that, no problem. We're gonna focus on one color here and I'll walk you through the steps, but you can do that with every single color here and every single color in every quilt that you have. Here I have just the cutting instructions for the dark blue. We're gonna walk through this with the dark blue, but again, this can be applied to everything, every color, everything. So I can see we need five inch squares, four and a half inch squares that are cut on both diagonals, three and seven eighths inch squares that are cut on one diagonal, and 224 uh, two and three quarter inch squares. In my patterns, I specifically say what you're gonna be using in each step. So here in the cutting, I have shown a little cutting blurb and then I have shown um, a making blurb from the actual construction section. So here I can see um, 224, two and three quarter inch squares. So I'm like, where do I use that in the pattern? I'm gonna go and look. I'm gonna find the section that has the two and three quarter inch squares and I'm gonna see, oh, okay, look, it's to make the flying geese. Now I'm remembering that I want the flying geese to be different than the center of my squares. So, okay, let's start here, right? There's you just glance through your pattern to make sure you're not using two and three quarter inch dark blue squares anywhere else to make sure these are all for the flying geese. The other way to check it um, is to see. So I'm using two squares and I need to make 112. So double that, 224 squares. So I can see, oh, all 224 of my two and three quarter inch squares are to make flying geese. So that's good. I know that if I want to change the way the flying geese look from the middle of the star, that I can start by cutting my two and three quarter inch squares from a different fabric. If you were cutting from scraps, you would need 224 two and three quarter inch squares. So to work any pattern from scraps, all you need to look at is what you need, okay? So for example, in the dark blue, you just, you would ignore the strips because that's irrelevant. You would just do 28 five inch squares. Okay, done. Then you would have these strips, which maybe you wouldn't have that in your scraps. So maybe you'd have to have some yardage for that or something. Um, here you need two squares, four and a half inches, each cut on both diagonal. So that's an easy thing to pull from scraps, two, four, and a half inch squares. Same thing here. You dig through your scraps and you'd find 24 three and seven eighths inch squares and then you cut them. 224 two and three quarter inch squares. So scraps are easy because all you do is ignore the um, the first step of it and you look how many you need. Now in this in the case here I can tell you that this is the border so you like that's the part I said you might not have from your scrap those in scraps because you're not further sub cutting these strips here. You're just using nine four and a half inch strips. So so you might have to say okay I'm gonna make this whole quilt for my quilt for my scraps except for the border and maybe the binding. I'll have to buy fabric for that. So then you would just um 
decide uh, what, what you want to use. And to see how much fabric you need, if you're just buying the border, you take four and a half and you times it by nine. So let's pull that up to show you what you get. So you do 4.5 times nine and you'd see you need 40 and a half inches. Now that's like exact. So I always add a few inches to that to either if your piece you got from the cutting um, from the fabric store isn't even on both sides and you have to trim away. I always give myself a little room for error there. So what I, what I would do um, to figure that out then is I would take away a yard because I know we're more than a yard. So I'd subtract 36 and then I'd see how much more. So four and a half inches more, this is an eighth of a yard. I would round up to a quarter of a yard. So I'd buy a yard and a quarter just for the border for that. And then I would look at these other sub cutting numbers and cut those from my scraps. Now let's say you had fat quarters and you're like, I wanna do all of the flying geese in black fat quarters. How many fat quarters do I need? What you would do is you'd say, you know that a fat quarter is 18 inches by 21, 22. Let's use 21 for calculation purposes here. So you take 21 and you divide it by the size of your square. So ours is two and three quarters, so 2.75. And that means that for every um, two and three quarter by 21, 22 inch strip that you cut from your fat quarter, you could get seven squares from. How many strips do I need now? You would take the number of squares that you need, 224, and you divide that by seven because that's how many you can get per strip. And you could see you'd need 32 two and three quarter by 21 inch strips of fabric. Well, how many fat quarters is that? Okay, so now we have to calculate the other way. When you're, when you're first doing this, you're actually gonna want to write this on paper and actually like write this out for yourself so you don't forget. So you can get seven two and three quarter inch squares per a 21 by tw uh, 22 inch strip. That's like the strip of a fat quarter. And you need, you, you need 224 squares. So then you'd add, I need 32, two and three quarter by 21 inch strips. Now, how many fat quarters is that? So the next step of the calculation is to see how many strips you can get per fat quarter. Well, a fat quarter is 18 inches wide. So we divide that by two and three quarter because they are the width of our strips also because we're cutting squares and we can get six. So sometimes I, I like to then go backwards and just see if I take six uh, 2.75, strips how much does that mean so 16.5 to me that's a good amount if you get too close to 18 uh then sometimes like i said before when you're straightening it out if the fat quarter is not exactly the perfect size or if you pre-wash or anything and they're not 18 inches you don't want to be calculating right to 18 inches because you're going to run out of fabric so 16 and a half that's like that seems really good to me so we can get six strips from each fat quarter. So now we're gonna continue calculating there. So if I need 32 strips and I can get six per fat quarter, let's see how many fat quarters we need. We take 32 and we divide it by six and we're a little over five. So you're gonna round up here because it's fat quarters. If you need 5.3, you can't just buy five. So you're gonna say you need six fat quarters. So then you make a note, I need six fat quarters for my flying geese, and there you go. If you want your fat, if you want your flying geese to be a different color than the rest of your star, now you know you need six fat quarters to make that happen. This may seem really tricky at first because you're not used to doing these types of calculations. You're used to having the pattern do it all for you. But what I have found is learning how to do these calculations just makes endless variations that you can make from each quilt pattern. Because if you know all the pieces you need, you could figure out what fabric you have and use it. It's a really great way to use what you have instead of buying new fabric for every single quilt. Because I know for me, sometimes I buy fabric because I'm like, I'm really, this is so pretty. I wanna use this in a quilt, but I don't have a project in mind. And then you get it and it sits on your shelf and you don't use it. But the truth is, you can use it by figuring out how it works in the pattern you have. Now, the chances of, of what you have, say you have a fat quarter bundle with, I don't know, 20 fat quarters. The chances of making that work exactly perfect in a pattern that doesn't call for fat quarters, um, it's kind of slim. But what you can do is use all of those if they fit and then add some more into it to complement them. Now that is a recipe for 
personalizing your quilt using the fabric that you have. You may have to add some to it, but that's okay. Um, I find that that makes it really fun. Now, just for fun, let's see what we could do with a 10 inch square. So if you have a 10 inch square, you will take um, 10 inches and you'll divide it by 2.75 to see how many you can get. Now you can only get three squares across and three squares down. So that means because it's a 10 by 10 and you're gonna have a little bit left over. Uh, so that means that from a 10 inch square, you can get nine two and three quarter inch squares. So if you wanted to use, say you have a layer cake and you want it to be super scrappy and you're gonna make all your flying geese with different um, prints from your layer cake. So then you can get, uh, so you can get nine squares per 10 inch square. So then you'll just do the same thing. You'll, we need 224 squares, you divide it by nine. And that means that you need 25 10 inch squares. So you would need 25 10 inch squares to cut all of the squares necessary to make the flying geese. So that is possible um, to cut from 10 inch squares. However, that's only the flying geese. So um, you're still gonna need every other piece. So it's not like you can make this whole quilt from a layer cake, but you can take layer cake squares and reuse them. Um, into this if you have leftover or if you have a layer cake and another cut of fabric you can try to make it work the thing with layer cakes and jelly rolls is why you can like adapt them to be used in any pattern it's not always the best use of fabric so if we take like i just said and you cut three strips so that's a two and three quarter inch by 10 inch strip of fabric. And then you cross cut those into your squares. You're only using eight and a quarter inches of that 10 inch square. So you're leaving some behind where there are some patterns that are made specifically for layer cakes. Um, for example, my two-step uh, quilt that's in my pre-cut parade book, that one uses a layer cake and it literally uses like almost every single bit of it. You have like barely any waste, which is really satisfying because you're getting a beautiful quilt out of it and you're making the best use of that 10 inch square. So while you can use 10 inch squares to cut the flying geese for these stars, that's possible. It's not like the best use of fabric. So if I were not following the fabric recommendations for this stargazer quilt which is in yardage i think your best bet would be to go with fat quarters or scraps scraps you can just cut all the pieces that are mentioned in the pattern and then use them and it's going to be gorgeous and scrappy fat quarters you can calculate virtually anything to be uh to use a fat quarter it's super simple just like i showed you there so for the for um the geese in here like I, we said we need six fat quarters just to make all the flying geese so if i wanted to make the flying geese here red instead of blue i could make by six red fat quarters um and then do that for the Halloween version that I'm going to be making during this quilt along, I am going to be cutting from fat quarters and scraps. So it's like a mix and match kind of situation. I have a fat quarter bundle that I'm starting with, and then I'm just going to be adding fabric fat quarters as I need and also scraps as I need. When you learn how to calculate these numbers, it really allows you to just make endless permutations of a quilt and not feel like you're limited or stuck to the calculations in the pattern. It is a really handy skill to learn and I would definitely encourage you to learn it. It is not difficult at all. It takes some practice, um, some getting comfortable with the numbers, but it's pretty basic math. It empowers you to just make the quilt you wanna make without being restricted by the fabric requirements set out in a pattern. If you have any questions on this, please let me know. I can do more videos on this if you're interested. Um, I think, like I said, this has become second nature to me. As I write quilt patterns, I'm always calculating. So I think nothing of it. Um, but perhaps this isn't a common skill that people have developed because it's not really talked about. So if you want to see more or if you have specific questions on it, just let me know and I would love to help you out. Thanks for following along.